Good morning and welcome to the 2009 NCSL Youth Football Tackle Football Program. I got to tell you, our league's been around for about 45 years. I've been the president for the last 12 years. Our league presently has somewhere around 700 boys ages 6 to 14 playing tackle football with an additional 250 young ladies who uh, act as cheerleaders. The most important thing that you need to know about our program is that we all volunteers. Not one of us receive a dime uh, in salary uh, or benefits. And uh, we're not looking like many other organizations to build some kind of structure. Uh, any dime that comes into our program goes directly to program, uh, towards programming. Um, I, I just think it's a key uh, element when you look at what's happening in our community uh, that young men need to be taught leadership. And what we do on this football field is teach young men leadership. I maintain that if you bring us a child at six years of age and you let him stay with us until he's 14, but walks off the field uh, at 14, heading 15 years old, heading to high school, is a complete young man who is number one, academically sound and astute, but more than that, he understands how important it is to become a leader. We're building leaders on our football fields. If along the way our coaches make a better athlete, that's fine. But from those tender ages of 6 to 14, character is the most important thing. And that's what we do here at NCSL. The reason I'm holding this plaque is that this is a young man who spent eight years in our league. He started at six years of age and uh, became a star running back in our league, number one. Uh, but even over and above that, he became a star running back at Wisconsin Lutheran High School. Uh, his name is Brian Webb Jr., a.k.a. BJ. His dad, Brian, who's a fireman, uh, still coaches in our league, uh, our junior football uh, uh, teams, uh, Falcons, and his, uh, his younger brother still plays in our league. But you need to know something more than just the fact that Brian Webb Jr. was a great running back, because that he was. He was going to, uh, to a major university uh, to play football. He was that good. He had a, uh, I think he led the conference that he was uh, in, 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 in yardage. So he was a great player. But here's the other thing. You need to know he had a, over 3.5 grade point average. If anything uh, is accomplished by what we're doing here, it is my hope, sir, that young men now will become not only better athletes, better human beings. I tell our coaches all the time, your responsibility is to make them a better human being. If along the way he becomes a better athlete, that's fine. And over the years, I can tell you, we've got young men in universities all over this country, all over the state. And we have young men who have gone on to play football, come back. They're now coaching younger kids in our league. So it's perpetual. I will maintain and tell anybody that the Neighborhood Children's Sports League, which was founded over 40 some odd years ago and incorporated, is a nonprofit 501c3 organization. We don't receive a dime in funding by anybody right now. And, uh, and we never turn a child away. Football is the most expensive sport to play, uh, and we don't receive any funding, but you will see that there will be over 650 to 700 boys out here again this year, half of which can't afford to play. But I think there's something wrong when we tell young people that you can't play because your parents don't have any money. So to that end, we will do what other programs and anyone else has never done, who don't, who don't receive funding, and that is not turn children away. For four months, we take those young people and we, we have to get them in condition, teach them the proper diets, the proper rest, how important it is to get their grades, and then we play football. So that's how this program works. Every child you need to know receives a, a trophy, not some little trinket, but a really nice trophy at our season-ending banquet, awards banquet, where um, uh, it is a catered meal, and every child will get the time uh, to get the recognition that he deserves. And you also need to know that at the culmination of all of this is on um, November 7th uh, when our championship game will be played in Custer Stadium. A paratrooper will jump out of an airplane and he'll land at hopefully at midfield and he will bring that, champion, that championship football uh, to culminate the end of our season. So. If anybody's interested in doing anything in the way of donating, we are 501c3. Our, our books are up to order, up to snuff, and we are in good standing with the federal government as well as the state. So um, just little snippets of what we're going to be doing. Uh, 
hopefully you'll follow us in this season and uh, look forward to hearing anybody who has any questions or comments can call me, Earl Ingram, at 507-5642. And I just wanted to tell you this last thing. Nobody does anything by himself. No man is an island. I could not have done any of this without, number one, a loving wife of over 30 years who allows her husband to take time away from his family. And, and all of these glorious 150 or so volunteers who come back every year. They don't come back for pay because none of us get paid. But we do get paid, if you know what I mean. We have young people who are doing the right things, and that's what our league is about. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it.